Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to apply styles. I'm going to go back to week three, or lab three, and I'm going to select my two files there, and I'm going to copy them, and I'm going to paste them into lab seven. So at this point, what we have is a very appropriate and well laid out HTML page. And we're going to want to create a CSS page. So I'm going to do a new file of type CSS. And I'm going to save it. into week eight, or lab eight, and call it O seven styles dot CSS. And I'm gonna hit save. Now Dreamweaver makes this brilliantly easy to link them together. It allows you to attach style sheet. And just select it. And you want to make sure to select link and OK. Now it doesn't change anything because it's empty, but you can see in the head section, it's put in the, t the link href, the styles.css, relationship is a style sheet, and its ty t a type is text slash CSS. So you can just type in that code if you're working in Optana, but I did another video for creating them in Optana. What I want to do is show you how we can take charge of this using styles, and we're going to do it one step at a time. We're going to put in a body tag, and we're redefining the body element. There's automatic styles that occur, and we're redefining them. And we're going to put in a background color, and Dreamweaver makes that also very easy because it gives you a color picker, and you can always go in and pick something custom. Let's try that again. And when you do that, it'll take over the whole thing. We're going to break it up a little bit. We're going to get into the container. And this is an ID, so it needs a hash mark, because that's a div tag. And so we're redefining the ID for that, and we're going to set that background color to something much lighter. It's a little off-white there. Okay. And then we're going to start playing with things one at a time and just sort of playing around. Um, if we change the font, it will apply to the whole page. And typically, I'm going to use a font family. And I like to use a sans serif. Make sure you put your semicolon in or it won't apply. Okay. And then I can start making some additional changes in here. I'm going to redefine the H1 tag. by changing that font. And here I'm going to use a serif, just so it's really obvious. So we can see where the H1s are. These two are H1, the rest are H2 or 3. We can also change the color here. And color always applies to the font, the font color, not the background color. And we'll make them Let's say dark green. There we go. We have an article in here. So we're going to redefine the article. And we can identify what's in the article by just changing the font. Let's do just the color.
So you can see all of this that just changed. That's all inside the article. I can actually be more specific than that. I can make it article H2. So just these H2 tags are that shade of green. That article also has an ID. Let's see where it is. Article, oh, no, it doesn't. We're going to give it an ID. We're going to set ID equals hounded. Go back over to the styles, and we'll put in an ID um, for hounded. Go back to split. Now I want you to see something. The article and hounded are both applying to the same thing. And we'll do this here, color. I'm going to comment this one out first. I'm going to get rid of this for just a second. I want to show you how this works. So take everything back to green. So I'm going to set the color here. And you're going to see the one that is more specific will win. And it doesn't matter what order they're in if one is truly more specific than the other. If one's not truly more specific, order matters. In this case, it doesn't. Now, it would be, the question is, which is more specific, having an ID or going down to the H2 level? And you can see that going to H2 is more specific, even though this is an ID. So I like to sort of do this live to show you what wins. Um, I'm also going to set a width on the container. Uh, pretty standard width, 960 pixels. doesn't show here, but if I preview this in Firefox, you see it's here and it's over to the left-hand side. It also <coughs> automatically puts some margins up here. Now let's play with this a little bit. Let's do... Margin, 15 pixels, that's going to be top and bottom, and then auto. If I do that, it centers it. The auto portion centers it. Now, I don't like how close the text is in here. Let's play with that in the article. I'm going to make the padding 25 pixels. Oh, that's just the H2. Let me take that and drop that there. And that puts everything in with the padding. Let's do the container padding. 10 pixels. Okay. And then I have several sections in here. Let's show you where the sections are. We can do that by putting a border. And we want a border style. style, solid, and then I need a border width, thick. There we go. I think that they need some space between them. So I'm going to drop in a margin. 
10 pixels. Okay, now I want to play with some of the formatting here. And often I don't remember exactly the code that I want to use, so I'm going to go to CSS reference, W3 Schools. This is where my favorite CSS reference is. Because often I'm going to want to look at things. Because it's hard to remember. One of my favorite quotes, Albert Einstein was once asked, what's your phone number? And he didn't know it. He held up the phone book and said, if I know where to find it, I don't have to memorize it. You're not going to memorize every tag. The ones you use all the time, you will. But if you don't use them all the time, you need to know where to go find them. And I like the W3 Schools pages. And so I'm going to copy in, and what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to change the link settings. And I never remember exactly the right words for these. So you have your link is an unvisited link. And that just changed these to whatever colors they have it set. But we're going to take a little more control here. So I'm going to make the standard link green. I'm going to make the visited link orange. That's not going to show up in here until I test it. I'll leave the other two as they are. Now I should, when I'm doing this, I like to make this all formatted in a standard way, so I'll usually go through even when I'm copying and code from another page and adjust it the way I like to format things because it's important to have consistency. It just it makes it a better looking page. It doesn't affect how it appears to other people, but it makes it much easier to upkeep and maintain when you use consistent formatting throughout. And I like this formatting because it lines up these curly brackets, and missing a curly bracket or a semicolon are two of the most common errors. It doesn't do anything to the appearance. Let's take a quick look in Firefox. And you'll see we have mouse overs, and that has got now a visited link. Okay, the other thing I'll show you, I want to get rid of these dots right here. So again, styles, we can go and that's a list style. And so we'll see that we want to go to list. List style. So we're going to want to go to list style type. Lots of choices here. What I really want to do is just make it go away. So that's for an unordered list. So UL, and we're going to redefine that. List style Type, none, there we go. And so I've made some very basic, basic changes in here. And it's, I'm not going to say it's the most attractive page, but it does show you that you can change things. And I want you to notice one more thing. We have an H1 here. We can also go in and define just the one in the header. So we're going to do header H1. Font size 36px. And then the other thing I would typically like to do at the top of the page is a text align center. Now obviously I do know some of these by heart. When you're looking for your CSS references, you're going to go to the W3 school site, look for the CSS, different characteristics. And now in here in these sections, I'm really not happy with the padding. Remember, it's, um, let me show you how that works. Let's take a quick look at this. I'm going to do an inspect element. And this is our box model. So we have the content, the padding, the border, the margin. So I have zero padding here. 
And since I want to have padding or spacing between my content and my border, so here I have my content, here's my border, no spacing between it, I want padding to give me spacing in the sections. So let's go back up to section. Let's do padding, five pixels, and that gives me a little spacing, 15 pixels, gives me a lot of padding. So I want you to go through and play with different settings. I want you to copy your um, HTML page from Unit 3 and go through and apply different things to each area. And go down to the level of redefining the different elements that you use. Play with the paragraph. Play with things like block quote. Usually I like these to be, we'll say that they are font style italic. And so you see that becomes italicized. And this is where you should do it, not in the HTML, because this isn't read by browsers for the blind. It's just st visual st styling. And the styling should be separate from the HTML. So I want you to go through and restyle your assignment from lab number three. When you're done, make sure that you link to it back in your index page.